Hi, welcome to another video of Stream Developers. This tutorial guides you in building an Angular chat application with integrated video calling support. We will use the Stream Chat SDK for Angular, allowing developers to build chat experiences similar to WhatsApp or Telegram to allow users initiate calls from the chat UI. We are going to use Stream Video's low-level JavaScript client. I have divided this tutorial into the following chapters. We will begin with a new Angular project. Then I will show you how to install the chat SDK and configure it. We will then add the video calling support and finally recap. You can explore the stream chat and video SDKs with a free account. To get started, head to the stream's website and start coding for free. On this page, you will find a form to create a new account. Or you can continue with a Google account or GitHub. Before we create our Angular project, let's run the final project. You can find it in this GitHub repo, Angular Chat Video Demo. So I encourage you to clone the repo or use GitHub code spaces to run the app. I have a local copy, so let's run it in VS Code. I will drag the folder to the VS Code app icon. Let's use the integrated terminal to run the development server. I will press Ctrl and backtick, then I will run npm start. I will command click the link to the local host and open it in the browser. So we have our Angular chat UI and on the top right we have a button to initiate a new call. Let's type any message and send it. We can react to messages using emojis and also perform other message operations like reply, pin, edit or delete the message. To start the video call, I will click the button on the top right and allow the use of my camera. Finally, I will leave the video call. So this is our final project for this tutorial. Let's begin with the chat feature. In this section, we will build an Angular chat UI similar to this image. The leading features of the app include instant chat messaging, media attachments, emojis, threads and replies, and other message interactions. Let's initiate a new Angular project and get started with the following steps. Let's launch a new terminal and get started. To create a new Angular project, we need to install Node. If you don't have it installed, go to the Node website and download the LTS version. I have it already installed, so let's go back to the terminal. I can check the version of Node with Node-V. You can see over here, I have the version 20.11.1. Next, we have to install the Angular CLI. As you see over here, we can install it with this command, or we can install it globally with this command npm install minus g angular slash cli on the mark you may need to prepend sudo over here but i have this already installed so i'm not going to run the command once you install node on the angular cli you are now ready to create a new angular project let's use this command to initiate a new angular project so over here we have ng new video chat angular Video Chat Angular is our app's name. For the next option, we disable routing and use a CSS style. And finally, disable server-side rendering. So let's press the return key to run the command. That will take a while to complete the installation. You can see over here, all packages have been successfully installed. Let's cd into the apps folder and open it with VS Code by running code and period. So you can see here we have the root folder video chat angular with all these other files since we now have the angular project in vs code let's bring the integrated terminal with control and backtick so that we can install the chat sdk with this command over here we are going to install stream chat angular which consists of reusable angular chat components then we have stream chat which is the core angular chat sdk without any ui components you can use this to build a completely custom chat messaging experience. Then we have NGS Translate Call, which is an internationalization library for Angular projects. Let's press the return key to install them all. We now have the chat SDK and other dependencies in place. So let's configure the SDK to work with the Angular app. First, we will open the SRC directory and go to the app folder. Then let's select appconfig.ts. Over here, we are going to add the required imports. Then in the app config, 
we import the translate module that we installed previously. To access the chat functionality, a valid user should be connected to the SDK's backend infrastructure. We should do the configuration in appcomponent.ts. Let's add all the required imports. Also, over here, we will modify the import to import the translate module, stream autocomplete test area module, and stream chat module. Next, let's update the app component with a constructor having the following services. Also, we define all these hard coded user credentials. Next, let's add the following code snippet. So, over here, we use a lifecycle hook to create a new channel using a chat service with the channel type messaging and also the title of the channel. When the channel is successfully created, we handle the channel operations. So over here, we are using hard-coded credentials. For a production app, the token should be generated from your server. When we create a new app in your streams dashboard account, you can use the API key, the app ID, and this token generator service to generate a new token for testing. Next, let's define the structure of the chat interface in appcomponent.html. So let's select everything here and replace it with this content. Here we are going to display all these UI components. Next, let's open style.css and add the following styles. First, we are going to add this import. Then we add an HTML element and set the height to 100%. Next, let's add the body. For the body, we have height 100% and margin 0. Next, we will add a root element. With this, let's use display flex and set the height to 100%. Then we bring the stream chat channel list and set the width as 30%. Let's copy that and paste it here. Then we change this to stream channel. With stream channel, we have the width to be 100%. Then we copy this as well and paste it here and change this to stream thread and set the width as 45%. For the body, since we have the height as 100%, we can also set the width to 100% as well. In addition to all the configurations we have done so far, the stream chat SDK uses TypeScript's concept allows synthetic default imports to write default imports in a more efficient way. Let's add the configuration in tsconfig.json. We should add the setting in compile options. So let's add it somewhere here. So this is all we need to do to get the chat messaging part up and running. To run the development server, we can use npm start. So you can command click the link to the local host to open it in the browser. So here we have the chat messaging part of the app. So we can send any message. We can also add files, images and videos or documents. Let's add the video calling part in the next. This section shows you how to integrate the video calling support to allow users initiate calls from the chat UI, we are going to use stream videos low-level JavaScript client. The low-level JavaScript client can be integrated with any other SDK or platform. To install the video SDK, I will open another terminal instance and run this command. npm install stream IO video client. This command will install the low-level JavaScript video client. So let's press the return key to install it. Next, let's cd into the app folder and generate a calling service. Since we have the Angular CLI already installed, we can generate a new calling service with this command, ng generate service calling. I will press the return key to install. So the command generated calling service.ts with this content and also calling service.spec.ts with this content. We are going to update all of them. Let's open our calling service.ts. The service we created in this file is designed to manage the video call, including joining and creating calls. It will enable both audio and video and leaving calls. So let's update the file by adding these two imports. We will use Angular signals to manage state changes reactively. We have a dedicated YouTube video that goes deep into using Angular signals in creating a video calling app. So I encourage you to check this YouTube tutorial to learn more about Angular signals. 
Next, we import the stream's JavaScript video SDK. Then we leave the injectable decorator as it is because we want to provide a service at the root level. In the export class calling service, let's add this reactive state variable, that is call ID, which will be used for having access to calls. Next, we will define a computed property for creating and joining a call using the call ID. The call.join method you see here helps to create the call, join it, and allows real-time transport for audio and video. When the call is successful, we enable both the camera and microphone. Next, we should create an instance of the stream video client. Then we will update the constructor with the following hard-coded user credentials. We have API key and user token. As you noticed earlier, you can get the API key from your stream account and use it along with the ID of the app you create on the dashboard to generate the token. Lastly, we will define this method to update the call ID. So if the call ID is undefined, we leave the call immediately. Otherwise, we set it. Next, let's open the calling service.spec.ts. With this file, we will leave it as it is. It performs a basic unit test configuration for the calling service. Next, let's go to the app directory and define two components to manage audio and video call related functions, such as toggling the microphone and camera on and off, accepting and leaving calls, and also identifying participants with session IDs. So in the app folder, we will add two other folders. The first one will be call. Then we add another folder and call it participant. In the terminal, let's navigate to the call folder. Since we have the Angular CLI already installed, we can generate the call component with the command ng generate component. Let's name our component call. You can see over here that adds these four files. We will update them later. Next, we can go to the participant folder and generate the participant component. We are going to use the same command. So here we change the name to participant. If we now expand the participant folder, you can see we also have four files. So for each of the two components, we have the CSS styles, then we have the HTML structure and the logic that defines the component. So we have the same here as the participant. The files in the call folder provides the required UI and logic for managing the call state and controlling microphone and camera states during audio and video calls. At this point, I will copy and replace each of the content of the files. However, you can explore each one of them in the GitHub repo. For the call component, we have all the CSS styles, then the HTML structure, and the logic that manages toggling the microphone, the camera, determining the participant session ID, and also leaving the call. For the participant, we have the CSS styles as well, the HTML structure, and the setup that configures the necessary bindings for displaying the participant's video and playing audio in the video call. Next, let's open the style.css file at the project's root. Then we add these root styles for the video call buttons. We will also modify the content of appcomponent.css with these styles. Let's also open appcomponent.html below the stream channel closing tag. Let's add this code snippet. To display the call UI dynamically. Finally, in appcomponent.ts, we will add the following call related imports. Then we will update the component decorator with the common module that was imported here and also the call component that was imported here. In the app component class, we will define a calling service. Then we initialize it in the constructor. Finally, we will add the start call method to initialize a call. Here we use optional chaining to access the ID of the active channel safely, which may be undefined or null. Finally, we set up the call by calling the setCallID method of the calling service and passing the channel ID. So this is everything we should do to set up the video calling part of the app. We can now go ahead and run the development server again with npm start. I will command click the local host to view the app in the browser. We can react to a message with emojis. 
and perform message actions like replying, pinning, editing the message, or deleting it completely. To initiate a video call, I'll go to the top right and click the button Start Call. On the active call screen, we can toggle the mic and the camera and also leave the call. Congratulations, you have followed all the steps outlined in this tutorial to build a real-time and fully functioning Angular video chat application. The app allows users to send and receive rich text messages, media attachments, and connect seamlessly with others through face-to-face -face video calling. I encourage you to explore all the links in the description of this video to learn more about the advanced features of the Angular Chat SDK as well as the JavaScript video SDK. Thanks for taking time to watch this video to the end.